Hello and welcome to this video. Uh, I'm going to introduce a new communication technique for transmission of information. Uh, I call this technique coded time division multiplexing or CTDM in short. As I use a coding scheme uh, plus a time signal multiplexing technique. For coding part, I use a set of sequences that their lengths are less than the number of those sequences. And for the pulse shaping part, I use a set of time shifted Nyquist pulses. Uh, this technique has some background, and there have been a couple of publications on this technique, similar techniques. Uh, the most remarkable one is the article. Uh, that published in Nature around uh, one year ago uh, that is an orthogonal time division multiplexing technique for uh, optical communications. In this technique, uh, as we see, uh, several time-shifted Nyquist pulses are used to shape and uh, multiplex the signals. Here, uh, these pulses are orthogonal. But uh, my technique, uh, the employed pulses are not orthogonal. Um, before going to explain this technique, let me talk a little bit about uh, pulse shaping and in specific Nyquist pulse shaping. Uh, uh, if we have uh, some rectangular pulse like uh, this these black pulses in this figure um, for some a spectrum reason it prefers to uh, change the shape of pulse to a, a smooth pulse uh, by doing this the very uh, high frequency components of this original rectangular pulse uh, which do not carry a piece of original information uh, all are removed uh, so the shape pulse will be better suited to transmit to a communication channel. Uh, this process is simply called pulse shaping. So instead of sending a uh, sharp pulse, like rectangular pulse, we send uh, a smooth pulse like Nyquist pulse. Uh, Nyquist pulse is a very efficient pulse for uh, pulse shaping because of a very interesting and useful property that's sometimes called shift orthogonal property. Uh, here, if we look at this figure again and look at the color curves which shows the time shift uh, like with pulse, we see that at all integer points like 1, 2, 3, 4, only one of these pulses has a non-zero value and the others are all zero. So if uh, someone uh, combine these signals, a set of these signals together and send mm, in, in a communication to the communication channel, then uh, it's uh, easy to detect the signals just by sampling at those integer numbers or interval times. Uh, another point is that we can generate a set of sequences like in this metric matrix such that all pairs are mutually orthogonal. Uh, that is a very useful give us a very uh, useful and powerful tool for signal detection. Because, uh, again, if uh, someone um, adds up several time shift uh, Nyquist pulses together, then this resultant combined signal at these integer points has a uh, value exactly equal to only one of uh, that original single pulse. Uh, another inter interesting property for these pulses is that they can have overlapping in time domain without losing information. Uh, we can send wider pulse uh, 
to reduce the spectrum width of the pulse. Uh, we know that uh, wider pulse uh, in time domain has a shorter frequency response. So here in this figure, for example, uh, uh, in, in four seconds we can send four pulse signals, uh, rectangular pulse, but uh, if we send Nyquist pulse, we can use uh, longer pulses so that like five or six seconds uh, and this give us uh, uh, some bandwidth efficiency uh, because of these properties Nyquist pulse not only considered for pulse shaping but they are good option for signal multiplexing also uh, in signal multiplexing, a sequence of uh, serial data, high speed data, is converted into a substream low speed data. Then each substream branch can be shaped with a time shift Nyquist pulse or a linear combination of time shift uh, Nyquist pulse, as I mm, discussed later. Uh, based on the property we mentioned earlier, a set of discrete points can be equivalent to a, com uh, to a combined or a combination of continuous Nyquist pulses. So, on the one hand, we can send digital data, and on the other hand, we can take advantage of uh, bandwidth efficiency of continuous Nyquist pulses. As I said, uh, one way to multiplex signals is uh, to use only one single sh time shifted uh, Nyquist pulse, um, as appeared in that paper. Uh, but uh, there is another way. Uh, before going to that way, uh, here uh, we see that each Nyquist pulse is delayed at values of multiple integer of inner all pulse first and then they combine together for transmission. Here uh, is the second one, second uh, approach uh, as an alternative to the uh, first one uh, as a possibility for multiplexing of signals using a Nyquist pulse shape. That is using a linear combination of time shift Nyquist pulse in each substream branch. This idea shapes the starting point of my technique. Here, as the, uh, sh this figure shows, uh, this, uh, a set of orthogonal codes are used to combine time shift Nyquist pulse in each branch. For example, wash codes as seen in this matrix. We see that uh, in each branch, uh, we uh, make a linear combination of this with coefficients uh, borrowed from Walsh codes. Now, I want to ask a bandwidth efficient question. Is it possible to multiplex more data by a lower number of Nyquist pulses? For example, sending 1,000 data by 100 Nyquist pulse. If possible, then what is the bottom number for a given a number of data? Uh, if uh, the answer of this question is uh, positive, then we will achieve um, higher bandwidth efficiency but at uh, cost of losing orthogonal property. This is my answer to this question. Um, if we use a set of codes that their lengths are less than the number of those codes, and of course they must be decodable, then we can have a positive answer for that question. Um, here, uh, fortunately, uh, such a coding scheme is available 
and I employed this scheme from this paper uh, published about uh, 20 years ago in uh, IEEE Transactional Information Theory um, as we see this matrix uh, contains that uh, uh, codings and uh, uh, can be generated of course recursively as shown here uh, starting from D2 uh, 1 1 1 minus 1 and we see that uh, the number of codes is increased faster than their lengths when we grow the matrix um, this is an example uh, for uh, 5 for CTDM uh, as we see we can have additional branch for the fifth data while uh, using the same number of Nyquist pulse we use four Nyquist pulse for sending five data uh, as we see the last uh, row of th that mat uh, matrix is different uh, with uh, Walsh codes all are one except minus one and last one uh, so uh, we can combine these signals to perform the uh, CTDM signal okay let me stop at this place uh, I will continue in details from the next video and talk about the performance of this technique uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next exciting video